Yeah, I just sent around the um, the links. I'm sorry I didn't do that last night. I don't know why I didn't go through last night. Um, but if folks want to take a moment to read over the April 20th minutes. <laughs> We'll also have to approve the agenda. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's start with that. That makes sense. <laughs> so for the agenda, we'll review the minutes, um, uh, uh, discussion on, on strategizing, and then we also got like self-education learning roundtable, report back from other committees, things like that. So can uh, someone make a motion to approve the agenda? I make motion to approve the agenda. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Pella, do you want a second? I second. <clears throat> One favor? Um, Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. So now we've got the minutes. Oh, this Lauren. Lauren. Oh, hey. Morning. Sorry, I, we just started without you. Um, but we're just reading over the minutes. Um, are you back in the office, Lauren? Whoa. No. Wild. So no. <laughs> just teasing. Um, well, does anyone make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll do that. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Jeremy seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. <clears throat> so um, we were just talking about how um, uh, we didn't get to talk about it, the stipends at the last city council meeting. That So that'll be punted to the next one, but that we um, don't feel like we need to talk about that. We can just um, dive into the rest of our agenda, which is mostly just to discuss and to strategize about what's next, um, as we've been kind of in the like, hurry up and wait, you know, rush, 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 getting the site thins out, and then it's, and then, you know, like, and before that too, it's not new to the site then, but um. I was thinking of just having like an open discussion unless someone has another proposal for how to how to have this. Well, <clears throat> we, we I I think we could um, just you you sent you sent the um, presentation and I guess we could look at their recommendations and see what's left. Yeah. So that's... Um, all right, I can just pull that up and share my screen if that's so you're all I can't like looking at the same thing. I was, I think, uh, kind of noting what you mentioned, Sheena, I wonder if there might be three buckets of potential uh, things to consider. One is, of course, the recommendations from Creative Discourse, which came out of a pretty um, robust process. The, the second bucket that comes to mind is kind of emergent issues and you know, thinking a lot about the discussion around unhoused people in our community that occurred at the city council meeting, for example. Um, and then the third thing I'm wondering about is, you know, as an advisory committee, does the council have specific re requests of us um, as well? So that's kind of how I'm, I'm, those three categories are kind of how I'm wondering about 
how we maybe start to bucket different options for us. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, the other, the uh, it's a kind of a matrix here because um, the recommendations that uh, Creative Discourse proposed had three different categories, mm -hmm. operational, relational, and structural. Mm -hmm. but I think those are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Yeah. We can... Yeah. We, can, we can create a matrix and put things in there that, you know, correspond both ways. Mm -hmm. Right, and then it's almost just kind of like, okay, Lauren and Cameron who's watching this video or, you know, staff, are there things that are happening at the city level that we want to, or like, or questions or considerations coming from the city that we want to add, like adding to this list outside of housing, of course, which is the, the big one. I mean, one thought that might've gotten captured in what Jeremy said, but like part of the kind of responsiveness to what's happening in the city, like I'm thinking of um, like community engagement around the Elks Club property, for example. So like, how are we both helping that process, but also trying to like institutionalize practices that then it's like, we shouldn't be, it feels like we're like reinventing the wheel every time. Yeah. So how are we like getting like, okay, here's different, like, ways you can do outreach that are different than how we've done it historically and, like, get processes in place that city staff will be able to carry on mm -hmm. uh, without us, you know, or, like, or does this group have a specific role in when there's a big community engagement process going on, like, that we know, like, this is our role and here's how we're, like, supporting the city in it or... I don't know, I'm just like, how do we just like operationalize more of this and get it like built into the culture of the city and to the just practices um, mm -hmm. and like using what's happening in the coming year as like ways to just build out those like resources for the city. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking of like the budget, like how I start, tried to start doing that. And like, to me, taking that to the next level this year should be a big priority. Of like, how are we really trying to embed equity considerations into how we actually craft the budget from the beginning. And does the city have like a participatory budgeting goal for next year? I remember Cameron mentioning that or something around those lines. And I could be making up those words from other places in my brain. So I don't remember the city talking about it exactly as participatory budgeting. Um, the, I mean, the way it's typically done is the staff kind of comes up with their, both their like list of just what's happening to do city operations. And then like their kind of wish list of like, here's projects that might or might not get funded that I want to like put on the maybe list. Council's doing strategic planning, which will happen in the fall and has like their wish list of things um, yeah. and priorities. So it's very like city staff driven and then it goes and then like there's many iterations like it's talked about at a bunch of city council meetings basically like all fall through January when the final budget so there's like formal budget meetings in usually December and January, um, but the like, but the conversations informing what's going to make it in or not are happening usually all fall. Um, so, but there, so I think there could be ways to try to figure out how do you get input in sooner? Because it's hard to like react once it's done. You're kind of nibbling around the edges. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Michael? Um, Lauren, can you say anything about the usefulness and, uh, and, and um, maybe the, the further development of the equity tool that we did send to the council? Um, is, is that going, is that, the process that, or is that part of the process that is now built into the budgeting discussions or do we have to, is there another step that our committee should take um, either refining it, expanding it, 
somehow or just remind just simply reminding everybody that it's there um, what would you what would you say about that yeah i mean i would definitely want cameron's take on because i it's kind of her how she's using it i could see um you know and, and maybe next meeting when we have cameron here like is there you know this summer we try it out with a couple departments or something and like walk through like this is what we mean and like here's what the language means and here's like how you do it to get them familiar with it because i i don't think i don't think it's been extensively used yet and i i would be it would be very understandable if people don't totally get how to use it because it's new and different so that would be my guess but um so I'm not sure, but yeah, Cameron would obviously know better like how she's tried to like roll it out to people. And I know she's talked about wanting to use it more extensively. So that could be a role where we have, um, could help like support that process. Okay. And helping people, like meaning helping like the, the public who are coming to these meetings and, and recruiting, like and, and doing outreach to try to get people to come to these meetings. Is that what you're? I can see both. I can see yeah. us both yeah. thinking about, can we look at the budget process from start to finish? And like, where is our community participation and input opportunities? And are there ways to improve that? And city staff who does the bulk of the work putting the budget together and has, you know, most of the knowledge of like, what do we actually need for the different line items to like run city government mm -hmm. how are are we helping support them and also like getting into the practice of using that um assessment when they're building their department's budgets Well, I guess it would be useful if we got any, if we, if Cameron has already used it in some of her discussions, it would be useful to get some of her re reactions to it and where she thinks it need, it, it might need some shoring up or some changing or, um, or maybe el eliminating if that's necessary. So I guess we, we wait on that um, until she's back. That'll be the 18th, is that right? That's our next meeting. I'm pulling up my calendar. Yeah, so next week, the 11th is the city council meeting. And right. then the 18th is our CJAC meeting. Yep. Well, okay, so we can, we. I'll just put in the minutes that we'll, um, we'll ask Cameron for a, re a review and report, uh, report and review on um, the, the use of the, of the tool. Yeah. Lauren, I like what you began talking about with maybe our role in helping to institutionalize more participatory or different kinds of participatory practices. Um, because that that's one thing that I kept thinking about as I was listening to the discussion about the Guertin Park structure last Wednesday, is there, there just seemed to be uh, kind of a, a lack of shared understanding around the experience of people who are unhoused and maybe are making the most use of that space and other spaces. And so I kept kind of, you know, my, my tools and my experience, particularly around like kind of community stuff, is like getting people together in different ways to have conversations that change how people perceive each other and understand each other. And so the, those were my notes like, oh, we need a way to get like people together on these issues in a different way. Um, so I, I really appreciate that potentially that could be a role for us. Um, and would like to think more about that. 
That's definitely something that's been very lightly pending on our to-do list for years, right? Is I'm trying to pull it up right now. And of course I'm too slow, but of um, like proactive, I think we've called them proactive educational events on housing, racism, bathrooms, et cetera. And so do we want to, I mean, is that kind of what you're thinking about is like a, a general public conversation about um, the experience of unhoused folks in Montpelier and like not, not even focusing on like solutions, but of mm -hmm. like having common like language and understanding about like what what's what does it look like yeah I don't I don't know if that's what I'm thinking about specifically okay. just yeah. because um each conversation is going to require kind of the input of even just talking about how you want to have oh, a conversation yeah. right it needs so much expertise um, so maybe I'm thinking like taking a step back to, more to what Lauren was saying around if we were to build a framework for, you know, how to do these kinds of participatory conversations or events, I don't know what they are yet, but, um, that, that could be a place to start. Um, and then maybe there's, of course, like there's the a test issue that we want to kind of try things out kind of in the way of a prototype um but yeah i think i mean i think yes what you're saying Shane, is is right like um bringing people together to build more of a shared understanding around issues that are affecting us I'd like to talk here about, and this is this is something that concerned me from the very beginning when we were setting up the the, the various panels. We're we're sort of stuck, I think, in a uh, in a dilemma of wanting to get more voices, and at the same time, uh, acceding to the the uh, insistence, at least creative discourse made that insistence of anonymity. And it, and and I don't know how to I don't know how to get beyond that. I mean, people want to be heard, but they don't want to be identified being heard, and uh, or at least we're told that they don't want to be identified being heard. And and I think that that makes it very difficult to get a um, you know not a, a, cross, a you know a number a lot of voices out in the open. And I don't, I don't know what to do with that about, about that. I'm just pointing that out as a, as a problem that I felt was central to what creative discourses methodology was and how we were able, how we were not able to use some of that um, because the list were closed and we couldn't reach, we can't reach those people. They, they insisted that that's, that's almost proprietary information, which I find a little bit offensive because we paid for it. Um, and and I th and I think it's, it's necessary. I think we need to be able to invite people to come forward, um, and with the understanding that if they do that, they're no longer anonymous. But and then there are just, to... I'll just finish this one thought. And then there are other ways to do it. There doesn't have to be one route to getting information. We can we we can ask for people to remain anonymous. Um, I think that weakens the 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 um, the authority of the information that we get if people but but i will respect people's will concern and willing and w wish to be re remain anonymous i was just gonna say like creative discourse has said that they can send out emails to this list and things and i think you're totally right of just like and they reached out to a certain set of people and they have those you know they and they were able to participate and everything else and like I'm sure there's a ton of people who they reached out to who couldn't participate and they don't have their contact information. You know, like it's like, and if we were to like hit refresh, it would, we would get a different list of folks. And so I think we can like both ask Creative Discourse to send it out into like recognizing that that would be less anonymous of feedback. And I think we can start, I want to say start from scratch because I feel like that sounds bad. It's not like, it's not like we're like, 
yeah, but we can, we can build our own list, I guess is what I'm saying. And it sounds so, ah, like we're not like building a list of people. We're like getting like. <laughs> Shana, well, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Can we do something like that? Can we ask creative discourse to send the email, all this group yeah. and ask them, okay, the results were welcomed and you know we want to do more about it do you want to share your information with the city maybe some people will say yes then we can start talking that group because i've uh, taken surveys and you know things like that and there's always option right do you yeah. want your information to be shared yes or no so i think it is okay to ask this i don't know how yeah, it sounds, but it might be a good start. They're going to send out an email saying like, hey, the stipend thing is happening. You should consider joining a committee. And like as part of that email, can also say, and if you want to stay in the loop. Yeah. Great. Sorry, Michael. Yeah. Well, and we might also be able to um, ask people if they can recommend others, if they can, yeah. that, that can be contacted. I mean, that's the way grapevines work, right? <laughs> you just you start with people that you know, you start with things that you know, and you work out from there. But it still leaves, you know, it still leaves us kind of uh, in the background with, with, see, with creative discourse, you know, calling I mean, all the shots yeah. on who, who is available. And, and, and I just find that difficult to work with. And, and, um, and I, at this point, um, you know, I think we really need to say we need to be more assertive about it. we need to be able to operate on our own too. I don't know what to say, but I just... like, like I've seen a similar so for um, one of the state government processes that I've been that's been happening over the last year. Like, for example, they were also doing affinity groups that were not open to just anyone to participate. And so even though it was state government and they have all the same like public access information, like requirements and stuff, they were able to figure out, I almost wonder about like talking to them. I know that they had consultants, so I don't know if it was a similar structure where via consultant, you can do things that state government itself can't do. But like, I mean, I could still see a role for there's some small piece where to continue being able to facilitate affinity groups where I think you do get different input than you get in other types of spaces. And I think, like you said, there's like many different ways you can try to get information. There's like public meetings, there's like online surveys, which could be anonymous. There could be paper surveys. Like there's different ways I think we could get information that if people don't if you know have the option and don't want to identify themselves, we could still get input. So um, I hear what you're saying, and I think like to the how are we putting structures in place that can be like long lived, trying to be both limited and what would need to be facilitated by something other than the city. Like we should definitely be very conscious of that, and maybe there is some small role where um, either we can figure out how you can legally do like affinity groups and things like that? Or does that, if you want to keep doing that kind of way of gathering community input, does it always have to be through a third party? I think I'd be curious of trying to figure that out. Or yeah, I think, oh, sorry. I just, my understanding of why we went through this process was that, you know, there's a lot of, um, uh what is it called like FOIA requests from the state government uh, from not from this oh my god sorry there's a lot of like requests for transparent information from the for this like from the city of Montpelier by residents right and that like wanting for people to be able to share freely without fear that these um that like they're that like that they won't be like put on a list on Facebook of like, here are the people who like made it so that we have to go through this process. I'm like trying to make up like whatever it was, but that like, that we like made, we were wanted to have like a really strong commitment to anonymity in that process. And that's kind of like why we went through this process. 
And then there's like a different, I write, I think it's like asking for like being like that process is now done. We're asking for your consent to participate in this like separate public process. We're going to bring in new players as well. Um, totally makes sense. And I don't want to, I don't think it's that like creative discourse is like holding the reins on where we go. I think like, I, I feel like we like very intentionally went through this process to kind of like divorce the like the possibility of who participated being public and um and like be, so we can be able to get like really clear results and just like if we're going to go through another process where it's like more of a conversation and it's open people should be able to like opt into that as well I think that like I think this makes sense of like sending out a follow-up email asking folks to participate in this more public process and I think the first round of what we did was right um I don't know well, I, um, I think we need to get a little bit more guidance about what the what the um, um, the rules are, what open meetings, you know, what the open meeting rule is, and how how well it can be. Because the city council can go into executive session. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you go to an even higher level, um, a much higher level, when there are there are closed hearings that take place in Congress all the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, and um, I don't know that anything like that happens at the city level at, or even at the state level. I mean, I know the city council goes into executive session, session and they always cite the, the rule, but it would be helpful to have Lauren or, and or Cameron give us a little bit more coaching on that. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I don't, as I say, I don't know if the, the Vermont State Legislature ever uh, committees go into into uh, closed session hearings, but yeah. we could find out about that too. That's an easy enough. Yeah, that's yeah. easy enough. And if there are such possibilities, then we could offer the same thing. I mean, we could have closed hearings. Right. Um, the, the the people who attend would, and they they would they would not necessarily have to know each other or be identified to each other. They can be successive instead of a group. Um, but I think there's something about group dynamics that's both helpful and harmful. I mean, I've been in group dynamics, group <laughs> where the dynamics starts off in one direction. It's like a snowball. You can't stop it. Um, and, uh, and, and it, it shuts out other voices. But on the other hand, um, if people feel more comfortable having others with whom they have an affinity of one kind or another, then uh, I guess you have to accommodate that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, um, this is interesting. I'm, I second or third or fourth, I don't know, that request <laughs> to get some clarity on what kinds of conversations we can hold and what regulations there are, rules there are around them. Because one of the ideas, again, picking up off the, the conversation around Guerton Park, you know, one of my kind of quick ideas was like, oh, we need to get folks who use this space into like a design workshop. And like understand what the issues are, what the needs are, um, and let the people who use it dictate the design of the space. Like this is a kind of a design problem, right? Um, but then you get into issues like, okay, if we were to organize that as CJAC, does that mean anybody can show up and stir right. the pot, for example? Or could we have it be more of a small scale, intimate kind of thing? So I think the, that's a really some clarity around that would be really helpful for that are like tactics that we want to use moving forward. So I've got that. We'll have Cameron report back on that in the next meeting. Um, should we transition to more of like what other ideas do people have? And um, just recognizing it's 830 now, 835. Um, should we, should we kind of put, put all of, all of the virtual, not virtual, like, I'm I'm trying to make a joke and it's like working in my head and I can't get the words out of like <laughs> put all the post-it notes up on the wall. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, do other, yeah, like, so I guess for just following the Great and Park thread for a quick moment, um, do, what is the timing on that? Um, do you even know, I can't remember if we know, but I think it's like we, any process that we would want to move on is probably going to be yeah. much slower than the park getting removed and like that yeah that being like an immediate tit for tat yeah 
Yeah, I was I, I was surprised that the structure hasn't been moved already. It sounded like everybody just wanted to be done with it. Um, so well, I, 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 I walked past it yesterday and, uh, and there was a sign posted on it. I didn't go up to read it, but because I was in a hurry, uh, but I have to be downtown today. I'll take a closer look. But it was pinned, there was something pinned to uh, the to the structure, and I think it I think it was announcing a date when it was going to be moved. But I'm not sure, and I'll I'll if I find out any more, I can email all of us just as sharing information. I can take a picture cool. of it circulating. I mean, this may not be so dependent on the Guertin structure itself, but um, you I could imagine. Some kind, and I'll use the I'll use the word design workshop just as a placeholder. I don't know what that means, but I could imagine some kind of design workshop for that particular space. It it's a very significant space for a lot of reasons that people have talked about. Yeah. Um, and I could imagine a kind of you know design workshop co-design thing where people can help determine what that space is um, and and kind of understanding competing perspectives um, so that it perhaps is used by a lot of different kinds of people. Um, so, and I, don't, and I don't necessarily feel attached to that because that's a, I think it needs partnerships, it needs a lot of work, it's not just a CJAC thing, um, but that is an example of something we, you know, a kind of conversation we could, we could host. This has happened in the past. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the technical term for those, are, it's called charrette. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and when the uh, I was on the, the the small group that designed and sort of got found the funding for the the, the what you, I guess you'd call it the parklet in front of City Hall, mm -hmm. um, and the problem I mean there was a clear problem right the city people thought that the kids hanging around City Hall was um, and was ugly and they didn't want them there <laughs> and they wanted to pass loitering so no loitering uh, signs and. And actually, um, they did they did um, arrest kids for sitting on the steps. When was this, Michael? What era? Well, yeah. Um, let's see. My it, it's now probably a, about thirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My my kid was my kid was one of those who was was brought in was was arrested. Oh my uh, gosh! For 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 loitering on the on the state city hall steps. Um, he was probably about 10 at the time, <laughs> to maybe 12. Um, um, and, you know, what we what we did then was, OK, we got um, we we got a plan together about and there was money for something called ice tea at that time. It had to do intermodal transit. Wild. Um, and we had to get the city council's approval to uh, submit the proposal. They reluctantly did that, and there was all this sort of voce, oh, they'll never get that grant, ha, 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 and we did. But then we, then we did a charrette, and, you know, got, and, and just, it was an open call, and we were at the space, and we said, well, what, what would you like to see happen here, and what, what are some of the ideas, and, it, you know, what we got is what we got, and there were a couple of things. The reason there were cobblestones is because people didn't want skateboarding in front of yeah. city hall all right so you make the surface un un totally unfriendly to skateboards and and that was the that's the reason for the cobblestones mm -hmm. um and um and the side gates were some way to sort of separate the city hall's property from the the, the park park kind of property and things mm -hmm. like that and that's useful i mean um, you, you know if you get a, uh, an architect who knows how to run these kinds of things you you know if you get the expert in who knows what your what, what the questions are then you can get a lot of good answers and you, it's not as if you know you're making choices at that point you're just gathering as, as where you've been talking here you're just gathering the information and gathering ideas and you Put them all down, and you start working in working working from that list. So I think it's I think Jeremy, you're right. You're right that you know trying to hold some kind of public meeting on this on the location um, I think is helpful because you can sort of take a look around and see what what can we do here, um, and people can say what they want to say. Uh, that's so cool to hear that history. Thanks.
I, yeah. I'd love to actually know more about the criminalization of kids on <laughs> public spaces. It, it was it was pretty dreadful. I mean, it yeah, was it sounds... every spring to have the city council say, "Oh, the spring spring is here, and the kids are messing up the front of the city hall again." You know, so. What what comes to mind too, and like why this matters to C Jack is, I've participated in a number of shreds like that. Um, and not all of them have been designed in a way that promotes equity. Mm -hmm. um, and so as I think about our role, you know, partnering with the experts who have the right questions around the design of, you know, urban spaces um, is important. And also, you know, us holding a process and even just the, the way people come together that supports equity, um, that, that seems like why I think I'm interested in it even though I have like this other kind of design interest, um, it's like, how do we make these conversations so that the people who have the most at stake can really um, participate, so. I mean, I've been struck by the fact that people at city council have been very frank. I mean, that, that, it, that uh, meeting, uh, that discussion about what to do with Girton Park, it brought out a lot of people that, whose voices um, mm -hmm. we haven't heard uh, and people we haven't seen at city, city hall. Uh, city council meetings. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so sure that people are reluctant to, you know, out themselves if you, if that's if that's the proper word. Um, they seem to be doing okay with, with it and being quite outspoken about it um, last Wednesday. I'm putting that down as something else to ask Cameron about is like, what was the outreach like leading up to these meetings? And yeah, how, how was that shared? Because um, yeah, it was really powerful. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, Lauren. Sorry. Powered through. <clears throat> um, okay, so we've been talking about design. Sorry, I feel like I stopped the conversation, <laughs> which I didn't mean to do. Talking about like, you know, designing spaces to be able to bring in folks to be able to get all like different ideas on the table. Um, you know, have, having spaces where people are not just um, encouraged to come but like welcomed um are are there other things that like other agenda you know future agenda items to help us lead to these bigger agenda items for you know bigger conversations about um or having conversations about you know housing and homelessness and um and bathrooms and all these other things sorry doing a bad job facilitating <laughs> <laughs> trying to like participate it's hard to participate and facilitate yeah. at the same time just gonna say that okay anyway well i think the next big challenge that the city is going to face is how to deal with the planning for the elks uh the oaks right. and right. i think we need to be you know need to remind them that we're here um not uh, and make sure that they whatever process they do set you know establish includes somebody who's going to be knowledgeable about and speaking for, you know, equity issues. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. I, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to own that kind of public engagement process for such a no, it's oh, yeah. too big for huge us. set of, yeah. like, it, it's, but, it's, but holding the equity right. accountability seems a, a role for us. Yes. I agree. And that, that has lots of dimensions to it um, in this case. I mean, transportate, public transportation, mm -hmm. um, um, recreation, housing, how do you, how do you, so I, I, I think we, we should try to push very hard to at least have some kind of representation yeah. on, the, on whatever planning committee is, is assembled. Lauren, is there any, sure. I mean, I don't think the sale of the property is even closed, but is there any thinking about next steps beyond that? Um, we got a presentation, not last meeting, but the meeting before. Um, I don't know if anyone else was there. So the um, Mike Miller oh, yeah. the director was talking through essentially like a year long, he estimated planning process, which would be um, Includes a series of public input opportunities, which I would love us to weigh in on and have um, help shape, perhaps. 
Um, and then, you know, there's like the engineering and like site analysis and the, the stuff of like, what are, what are the opportunities and what are the limitations on the property itself? Like, what could you do with it based on the, just the landscape and whatever other constraints? And I assume in that would be some analysis of like transportation options and things, but, um, but yeah, so it was like that combination of work. And then as they kind of hone in on, okay, what kind of, where's their momentum? Um, I guess starting to make decisions so that you're getting to a plan um, that both has incorporating the public input and the, um, the site elements with engineers and architects and whoever, all the people that have to be involved <laughs> in that kind of project. Um, I mean, one of the pieces of it that I, in addition to the, like, the transportation and, and stuff, like I think this private public partnership opportunity slash it like also raises some very interesting equity and access issues and like how could that be structured if that's going to move forward, like should it move forward if it does, how are you doing it in a way that's like ensuring the greatest access and affordability and stuff for the community um, that we don't end up in a place where, you know, if you can pay a big monthly fee, you get a whole bunch of things. And if you can't yep. afford that, then you're um, getting some, or, or like we have less opportunity than we have now because there's a buy-in for certain things that used to be accessible through the city or something. Like I, I'm sure, yeah. So. That one in particular, I could see some issues. And then of course, like housing, huge other issues. <laughs> like how do you build that in a way that's, that'll be a great one for <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many considerations. You know what the timeline is for those starting? So that can be like July or, and like who's in charge of that process? Well, that's a good question. It's been, I think, mostly like Cameron and Mike Miller um, looking okay. at that. We and what's Mike Miller's to... role? I'm sorry. He, oh, he's the that. director of the planning department. Okay. Yep. Um, and yeah, so he'll be the one certainly like working with like the architect, engineer, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a planner had like that big view of like all just the pieces that go into a project like that. Um, I, I think less so like his role is not typically like, how do I maximize public like community input and yeah. stuff like that's other parts of the city would, mm -hmm. I think focus more on that. But so like they already did one public meeting that Paul Costello had facilitated mm -hmm. and then they were supposed to be gathering that input and putting it back out to people in some way, which I haven't seen yet. And then. Um, but yeah, we should get the schedule of like what, what they're thinking for next steps for public engagement and then um, see if we want to provide any input on that. On the other property that presents a, a similar challenge is the Confluence Park. Um, I don't know where, where that's going, if it's going anywhere. Can, can you remind me what that one is? I'm that's, a, that's, near the, that's near the transit, it's between the transit center and Shaw's. As you walk the path, you make that big turn and it's where the confluence of the, the North Branch oh, and, yeah. and, and the Winooski are. And there's, there is a plan posted up on a bulletin board there, um, but I don't know if it's been fine, if that's the final plan and I don't know where that's going and of course that's going to raise a lot of questions about mm -hmm. safety because it's down out of sight um uh, from the from the street level and um and the way it's been it's been designed there are issues about access there are issues about privacy there are issues about public space um, and and i've heard you know there are some people who now want to uh, i've heard just and say we shouldn't do we should not do this. So, but I think it's pushed along probably too far for that. The budget for that got approved. All right. That's right. Yeah. 
So I'm not I'm not sure what's holding it up. Do you was it just waiting for spring? We could be here until July for that. But I mean, yeah, that's we're supposed to get a presentation on that at the next council meeting. Um, okay. So if anyone wants to watch that or check it out later, um, I mean, so Vermont River Conservancy has been the partner with the city on that, and they've done a bunch of fundraising that we've gotten a bunch of like some federal grants and stuff. So there's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's a many year process. So I don't, I think it's been more, it's been in like engineering and design and stuff. I don't think it's, but I think it's just held up in the way that big projects just take a long time. I don't think it's been hit a roadblock or something that I know of, but maybe I'll hear differently <laughs> at the next council meeting. Um, but last I, the last update we'd gotten, it was kind of like, there was still just like fundraising and other things. Um, but yeah, I don't know in terms of like design and stuff, how locked in they are, if they got federal grants and stuff around a specific design or if it was more conceptual and there's opportunity for um, kind of like where, how locked in the design is, for example. But there is a design and the like process has started essentially is what you're saying. And so it's just like a, yeah. yeah. At least the process of like fundraising and like yeah. engineering the design. and designs and stuff, like the planning has, is by like far, is a couple years in. Um, I mean, they haven't broken ground yet or anything as far as I know. This is like coming back. I really hope no one's watching this and it's like, Trina, like we had multiple conversations about this and I'm just like, ooh, I like don't remember it all. <laughs> Just for reference, Sheena, here's thank you. What we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, so it's like a gradated, like a kind of walking path and benches, and then like they want boating access and yep, mm -hmm. trying to be like our river should be an asset in our city mm -hmm. and like a beautiful part of it instead of something we try to just get over on bridges and wall off with concrete yeah and then as michael said there's complication to all of this. <laughs> there's complexity in the world well that gives us i think a sufficient uh, number of items on yeah it I was like, I, I, can I, we stop this before I, we get more items that are going to yeah no. I, and, I, and i think that's a good idea i think we really need to re realize that you know there are all there are going to be equity problems on every project that, that comes you know involves public money yeah. and and we need and we just have to pick and choose where do we think is, are the, is the most critical place where um, we can be helpful in designing a process for, for get, you know, getting to answers. Um, you know, this committee probably will go on forever <laughs> because, <laughs> because uh, problems of social justice and equity are ancient. <laughs> yeah. So I think what I'm hearing is next, we'll have Cameron talk to us next week, next time about a bunch of different things including how the tool is being used, uh, guidance on open meeting laws, what kind of outreach happened for the city council meetings, what's the timeline for the Elks Lodge process and for the Confluence Park process. And then we'll kind of take it from there. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. So we'll just uh, have Cameron do a whole bunch of research and report back <laughs> to us. And then <laughs> as per usual, yeah. we have on her. Yeah. I know we have to do this to her, but I'm I'm I feel badly that we keep you know dumping more projects into her lap. And um, I mean, I do think these are all things that are happening anyway, right? Yeah. Like, I hope right. that it's not creating new work for her. It is making me go like, oh my god, how is she doing all of this work all the time? <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. But I do think by asking very specific questions from her or, you know, yeah. that, that will help her get through, you know, you know, to focus her attention on just those things instead of trying to have to create the structure of the questions for herself. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you all. Anything else while we're all together? Or do I, I, will, the agenda I, again? 
I won't be able to go to the city hall meeting on the 11th or be here for C for the CJAC meeting on okay. the 18th. I'm, uh, uh, those are both travel days for me to the Southwest. So to and from the Southwest. Have fun. Arizona, right? Yes. Yeah. Have a good, good safe travels. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I have to be out for an hour during that um, facilitating meeting, but I'll be there um, and hopefully that'll work around the presentation timing. So, um, cool. Well, thank you all. Hey. Appreciate all your work. Yeah. yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you later.